I'm going to talk to you about a replacement for the AC5 alternator. I'm actually quite excited about this. I think it's a really quite an exciting development. The AC5 that we all know and love so well, incredible alternator, very reliable, very simple. Um, it's easy to get parts. And the reason for that is because they're in such widespread use. They're in use in all sorts of vehicles and lorries and um, older coaches and stuff. Um, so that's why the parts are easy to get. You can get uh, brush packs, you can get bearings. Um, fans are getting a little bit more difficult. My concern is twofold. My concern is uh, the supply of parts in the longer term. Um, and that's why we've decided to look at an alternative. My other concern is with the increase in use in electronics within road vehicles and in marine applications, there's a more of a demand for current. The AC5 only produces 50 amps, that's your limit. Um, its big brother, the AC7, produces, I think, a maximum of 90 amps. It's a lot bigger. 90 amps, that's all you're going to get. Uh, the alternator that we have in mind as a replacement is this one. Readily available. They're normally swung mounted. They're not cradle mounted. But we've measured the diameter of the ASC5. We've measured the diameter of this. And they're really pretty close. They really are. Now, we have customers out there who are using these alternators on Gardner engines. And they're working fine, no problem at all. They don't fry the batteries, they, they're not knocking out any electronics or, or anything like that. Really, super job, very, very good. The problem is the shaft. The problem is the coupling. You'll remember, this is your well-known typical shaft for the AC5. This is your typical modern uh, rubber coupling. That goes on there like that. Then that end pushes onto the auxiliary drive on the engine, and you have something similar at this end for the alternator. Um, part of the problem is that whenever these were originally designed and brought out by Gardner, I think they were something like 14 ply thick. But if you have a quick look here now, you'll see that I suspect they're not even 9 ply thick. They might only be 6 ply, I'm not too sure. They're just not up to the job. I somehow doubt that they're even up to the job with low output alternators like the AC5 and AC7, not to mention this modern job. So we've taken a look at this and we've designed a new shaft. This is it here. Now how does it work? Again, typically it's very simple. You've got this uh, coupling here, this flange coupling, which pushes on to the auxiliary drive and is held on there by uh, by grub screws. You've then got this rubber part. The rubber part screws on here using substantial cap screws, 8mm cap screws. This chap here then, this, or the little coupling that's on here, uh, its own shaft is in there like that. It is located using radial cap screws on here, three of them again, 8mm. The shaft pushes in here like that and is secured on there before you assemble with grub screws or you can just weld it. There's a fair amount of um, um, movement, axial movement along uh, the engine because they're cradle mounted. I would suggest there's actually more axial um, variability here in this modern alternator than there is in the original. Um, but don't quote me on that. So there you have it, really very excited by this. Um, the advantage of this one is A, higher output, 105 amps. B, the parts are readily available over the counter and will be for some time. They also are, are quite common out there in modern vehicles, in modern applications. You don't need an exchange unit. You can just go into your local marine supplier or your local HGV supplier and you can buy them over the counter. They're not cheap. The whole setup is not cheap, but it's, it's, um, it's good value for money at the end of the day, I would suggest, because 
if this coupling <coughs> gives up on their way, the shaft is doing uh, 1.8 times, typically 1.8 times engine speed. So if the engine's doing 1,000 RPM, this is doing 1,800 RPM. If the engine is doing 2,000 RPM, this is doing 3,600 RPM. It's flailing around. So if this fails, if it disintegrates or comes off or whatever, the shaft is going to be whipping around, oh boy, like below. And it'll create one hell of a racket. It's really quite um, disturbing. So we don't want that to happen. So there you have it. That's the way of the future, I would suggest. Um, another little modernization of gardeners. Uh, for the better, I would suggest. I hope you got something out of that. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to email me.